Meet Kwaku Mandela. He's the grandson of the late Nelson Mandela, who he affectionately refers to as Madiba. Kwaku is an activist in his own right and the head of one of the largest TV and film production companies in Africa. He's currently working on a new miniseries called, wait for it, Madiba, which is based on the life of Nelson Mandela and the struggle against apartheid. This is Coffee Talk with Kwaku Mandela. Ready? First, I love how we're matching. We totally planned that. We did. Um, <laughs> it was like this weird thing where, you know, I Snapchatted you and said, hey, are you going to be wearing olives tomorrow? And you were like, maybe. And then I was like, okay, maybe I'll do it. And like, it just worked out. Okay, so who is Kwaku Mandela? Is there anything that you want people to know about you that they may not already know? I'm a, I'm a filmmaker um, and I'm a person I hope that's very passionate about um, core issues. I tend to be, you know, quite shy. I feel like, well, it's funny because I don't see you as shy at all. Yeah, I was that kid, like, when I liked a girl, I'd be like, ooh, and then I'd like walk off to the corner, so, you know? <laughs> Love it. So let's go back to film. Sure. Uh, so currently, you're producing a brand new miniseries about apartheid, which is obviously very personal to you. Uh, what can people expect from this miniseries? Um, I hope they'll see a real holistic um, view of South Africa and the dynamics of that country, and um, not one that's just focused on one person. Um, I think that was always a big thing for me is, you know, there's been many films made about my grandfather uh, and many shows made about him, um, but they tend to forget the many men and women that were part of being able to overcome the apartheid struggle. They tend to forget um, kind of the key people that helped to shape who he was and who he became. And um, I think that's the proudest thing for me is to see this collective of people um, and how they were able to overcome what was kind of one of the most well thought out systems of oppression um, the world has ever seen. And Lawrence Fishburne, he's playing Nelson Mandela. How do you even begin to choose an actor to portray your grandfather? When we first started the process, you kind of go through all the names and um, there's a lot of talented uh, black actors out there. Uh, but. You know, there's maybe a handful that, you know, you would say can carry a, a TV show as far as, you know, broadcasters are concerned. And um, a lot of them had already played my grandfather, whether it was Sidney Poitier or, you know, Morgan Freeman or Idris Elba. And, um, I knew kind of instantly, uh, you know, once I spoke to the director, Kevin Hooks, and we were talking about names, uh, that Lawrence Fishburne was someone that I wanted uh, to go after. You know, I've always been a big fan of his work. You know, he's been making some of the most incredible films, um, you know, for many a decade. Um, and he's Morpheus, man. So I'm like, <laughs> no, but on a serious note, there was a, a likeliness that he had, but also um, this kind of gentle, warm spirit and spirituality um, that I think he reflected that um, I saw in my grandfather. And, uh, you know, I knew he was passionate about the subject matter, that he'd been involved, um, you know, in the anti-apartheid struggle in his own way as a much younger man in the States. And what excites me is, you know, he not only did a phenomenal job, I think, of trying to understand uh, who Nelson Mandela was, but, um, you know, largely all of the actors in this uh, show are from South Africa. And, um, you know, he was so encouraging to that talent as well um, and built some really, really great friendships with those people. So I'm excited for, you know, you to see that kind of collaboration. Yeah, I'm excited too. And I'd love to dig into this uh, for another film, which is uh, the new Nina Simone film. Sure. Uh, there's a lot of controversy surrounding the choice um, for Nina. It was right. Zoe Saldana. Uh, do you have any opinions on that? I think it's always hard, um, you know, Zoe Saldana is an amazing actress, um, but you're telling somebody else's story, somebody we know so well. And I never think you're going to kind of get it 100% right. I know for a lot of people, they felt the way that Nina Simone was portrayed uh, was one, not accurate, uh, was not diverse enough, did not give a holistic picture of just how amazing <laughs> she was. Um, and again, there was a lot to be said about, you know, how Zoe looked. Um, you know, playing Nina, 
I don't necessarily think an actor needs to look, you know, 100% like uh, the real person. That's never going to happen. Uh, but I guess they need to embody some of the characteristics. Um, and, you know, I'm not sure if she did that or not. And I'm sure there's going to be other films about Nina Simone. Uh, and, you know, I think they'll get aspects of it right, but they'll probably get other aspects of it wrong. It's never going to be perfect. It's interesting, you know, when you look at kind of films about um, black people in, in the world, ultimately, you know, usually they're about kind of, you know, heroes at the end of the day or they're really dark and it's about, you know, kind of criminal aspects of life. And so um, I think what's encouraging to me is to see, you know, unique stories that we kind of all deal with and find relatable um, coming out, you know. Um, and, and that's what excites me about storytelling right now. So let's go back to something you mentioned. Uh, so police brutality and institutionalized racism is a huge topic of conversation in the U.S. right now. How did you feel the moment that you heard about all of the most recent events, Alton Sterling, Philando Castile, the Dallas shooting? Um, I felt really sad, but I think this is something that we've been experiencing in the world for a long time. And the fact that we still haven't figured out a way to change it or a way to address it. Um, you know, there's great work being done by many groups. Um, the Black Lives Matter movement is probably bigger than ever. Um, but it is strange to me that in 2016 we're still dealing um, with this issue, um, particularly when we've been talking about the word equality for so long. And equality is very simple. It's equal rights, right? That's all people are asking for. So I want to do something. I want to read you something. Sure. I'm going to read you an actual post that I saw on my Facebook news feed, and I just want you to react to it. Sure. Okay. <clears throat> when will we understand the media news and what they cover, portray, report, tell, and broadcast is not for our benefit, but to subliminally mind FS? The news doesn't praise the white cop for buying groceries for the black mother and her kids. They don't show the deaths of the white folks by other white cops. They are allowed to lie, brainwash, slander, and tell whatever they want. And, to be quite frank, all of this is really so minimal compared to what else is really going on in this world. What goes through your head when you hear comments like that? I think that that person has an interest in, um, you know, something that is not focused, um, I think, on what current society is dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis. But um, that's their opinion, um, and there might be aspects of that that are true, right? We do know that the media kind of hones in on one story that uh, is sensationalized and ultimately that uh, is going to bring them viewers. Um, and so they don't go into the nuances of, you know, that one cop at the end of the day that might buy a family groceries. The reality is still that you know, this brutality continues to happen and we see it, you know, whether it's on our social media feeds or when we turn on the TV or when we're listening to the radio or we're speaking to friends over dinner. Um, so it's something that we face and we know is there. And I don't think there's any way that you can turn away from that. I don't think um, there's any rational way to justify that. Um, and, you know, if you would try, I would say that's, you know, a huge amount of ignorance um, and I feel sorry for you. I know there are a lot of people who want to get involved, white people who want to get involved, who want to support the Black Lives Matter movement, but they just don't know how. They feel like if they say something, it might be offensive. Do you have any advice for um, people and how they can take action? It's always easier to, to hide behind the fact that you don't know how to do something, but learn. You know, my grandfather always said this thing. He said, you know, no human's born knowing how to hate. They have to learn how to hate. And if they can learn how to hate, then they can learn how to love. And it's the same thing, you know, if you don't know how to engage with Black Lives Matter, go learn how to engage with Black Lives Matter. Um, you know, ask a friend, read a newspaper article, or understand, you know, what it is in the first place, and then figure out a way that you can play a role in it. Well, thank you so much for chatting with us today. It was so much fun. Um, and you're coming to this year's festival, so I'll see you at the festival. Yeah.